Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the two by-elections that the ruling Conservative Party have just lost and in emphatic fashion. I'll be talking about what the results mean, what they don't mean, what various parties might say about them and which statements may actually be true. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. Happy Friday! Oh, and if there are any Tories watching, happy Friday. This is a big moment. Definitely a potential turning point, though I take nothing for granted. Yesterday, there were two by-elections representing the two different types of seat that the Conservatives must retain in order to form a government after the next election. There's no, oh, we could afford to take losses here or there. No, they've got to win both types of seats. One was a red wall seat, which is the name tends to be given to former comfortable Labour seats that tilted towards the Conservative Brexit Party axis in the 2019 general election. The other was a so-called blue wall seat, much less defined, but a safe Tory seat that the Liberal Democrats have been targeting of late. Both of them fell. Now, I'll get into some details in a moment, although do bear in mind there's many, many things to discuss. Uh, you know, some things may arise uh, and I have to discuss them tomorrow or Sunday or something. But it's worth pointing out, both types of seat have now been lost by Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is only Prime Minister, remember, despite his clear unsuitability, because Conservative MPs don't think anyone else can win both of these types of seats in the same election. Well, guess what? Neither can Boris Johnson on this showing. But let's deal with the main issue that Conservative MPs will no doubt hide behind, in the absence of a fridge, that is. These are by-elections and they don't reflect general election voting. Well, yes and no. The turnout is lower. Voters also know that they aren't electing the government, so they don't always treat them as seriously. They can use these to send a protest vote. Absolutely. However, these results are not normal. The government would try, like to try and tell you, oh, this is the sort of thing that happens all the time. No, it doesn't. It's not at all common. for By-elections happen all the time. You do regularly get by-elections. But it is not at all common for them to flip. It usually just goes from the previous uh, MP of whichever party to the candidate that same party puts up. The, the party still retains it in almost all cases. And you don't get swings this big. In fact, the Tiverton and Honiton win by the Liberal Democrats, from what I can see from reports, is the single biggest swing on record for a by-election. There has never been a swing this large. And as for turnout, it was interesting. Both were lower than at the last general election, as expected. Wakefield's was much lower. There are two possible reasons that spring to mind. The reality is likely to be a mixture of the two. So on the one hand, and this is definitely what the Conservatives would try and say, it could be seen that a load of people who voted Tory in 2019, OK, they couldn't bring themselves to vote for Boris Johnson this time. But that Labour aren't exactly firing them up right now. But it could also be, and this is no doubt the, uh, the position that Labour would suggest, is that it was a foregone conclusion. Labour have been nailed on for this win for weeks. The bookies had Labour on one to a hundred odds. You put a hundred pounds down, you win a pound. And it's been like that for a long time, not just in the days leading up to it. You know, when you see reports of a contest not even being close, then both Labour and anti-Labour voters alike are likely to go, do you know what, I can't be bothered to go to the polling booth. You know, the Tiverton and Honiton turnout was higher at over 50%, but that was a much tighter contest. So people who had an opinion were much more, li more likely to turn out. They weren't going to go, oh, it won't make any difference. Really, it was so close, a few votes could have swung it. No one would have sat at home in Tiverton and Honiton and thought, oh, my vote won't count. Because every vote counted. In the event, the Liberal Democrats won handsomely. Wasn't even close, actually. You know, a week ago, the Conservatives were slightly ahead in the local polling, which wasn't a major concern because the same was true of North Shropshire last December and the Lib Dems still won that. And, and so it turned out the polling was shifting towards the Lib Dems all week and they were ahead come polling day. But I don't think anyone would have predicted such a comfortable win for them. Certainly the bookies odds didn't reflect that. Maybe the Tory candidate did. Certainly, as the count was ongoing, she realised the jig was up. 
because she reportedly locked herself in a dance studio at the sports center where the count was taking place. And you may be thinking, I did. I thought, oh, what's she done? And she, I thought it was just an accident. She'd accidentally locked herself in the dance studio and had to be broken out, how embarrassing. A bit like when I got locked in the toilets at Sherwood Forest. No, this was on purpose. She deliberately locked herself in a room to avoid talking to the press. Can you imagine that? How weak is that? The Tories have chosen a candidate in what used to be a safe Tory seat to represent them. If she'd have won that seat, and it was supposed to be tight, if she'd have won that seat, she'd have been set fair, because they're going to win it at the next election. She'd have been an MP for the rest of her career. Nice cushy job, you know, nice pension at the end of it, all the rest of it. But no, they chose a candidate that lacks the backbone to even talk to the press. And this was after the vote. So I can understand some retinence. You don't want to say the wrong thing. But the vote's been done. Nothing she says can impact the vote then. Easiest thing to talk to the press then. You can be honest, you can lie, doesn't matter, does it? What is this party coming to? I mean, I never liked them, but they were never this objectively useless before. And where was their glorious leader on this momentous day? Where was he to calm people down and, and he's buggered off to Rwanda, getting himself as far away from the country as possible. I said in the build-up to these by-elections that it would be Wakefield that would be more concerned to Tory MPs. Because that's what matters here. Yes, Johnson's majority has been cut down again. But he's got six MPs fewer than when he won the general election. But he's still got a large majority. These results don't represent a shift in power, just a shift in perception. But in politics, perception is everything. I said Wakefield would be a bigger problem for Johnson on the basis that... They do have credible leadership contenders who could steady the ship in their blue wall heartlands, if you call it that. The problem is they don't have anyone who can appeal in the red wall, or at least no one they can be confident can. But they are committed to a strategy that requires them to win both, so they can't just choose one over the other. But the sheer scale of the defeat in Devon will be a shock to Tory MPs in these sort of seats. Publicly, of course, they'll you do the usual thing, uh, mid-term blues, which it isn't. And, 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 and it's not reflective of how people vote in the general election, which is sort of true, but misses the point. This was a safe seat. It is not normal at all, in even by-elections, for the party in power to lose a safe seat. They may occasionally, and it is occasionally, lose a marginal seat, not a safe one. You know, and yes, as I say, people expect the Tories to take it back at the next election, but it's a safe Tory seat. It's in the top 40 safe Tory seats, I think. Very safe, in fact. A swing like this, if it's possible, even in a by-election, what's going to happen in the marginal constituencies? Because that's where the focus is. Not the safe seats, the marginal constituencies, where you don't need a 30% swing where you might only need a 5% swing. Privately, Tory MPs waking up this morning are going to know that this is their death now. If they don't do something big, they're going to lose. That's all there is to it. The culture wars aren't cutting through, and they're not cutting through because people are concerned about how to afford living under a Tory government. The Conservatives could actually make their culture wars more effective by reducing the urgent cost of living crisis, but they're not going to. Because not only is their twisted ideology right now making it impossible to reverse our economic decline, but Johnson has packed his cabinet with mindless toadies. Government policy is being led by not very bright people who are desperate to keep Johnson in place because few of them would get a job with a halfway decent leader. So to explain how bad this result is for the Tories, until the count, you wouldn't have bet against the Conservatives just sneaking it. And that would still have been a disaster for them because it would still have represented a very large swing against them. But a win would be a win and they could proceed to put lipstick on the pig. They'll just say, oh, we won, you know, it's fine. But they lost, they lost big. At the last election, the Tory candidate won over four times as many votes as the Lib Dem candidate. This week, the Lib Dems won with 14% of the vote more than the Tory candidate. Absolutely devastating. For a seat that's been Tory for a century. But the Labour result was bad for the Tories as well, very bad. Yes, Labour were looking strong favourites to win, but this was still the sort of seat the Tories need to hang on to in order to win the next election. It's all right to say, oh, they're expected to, to lose it anyway. There's no point in Tories dismissing this as, oh, it was always a Labour seat anyway that just went back, no biggie. 
It's a massive biggie for them. Without being able to win seats like this, the Tories have got no reason at all to keep trashing their reputation by sticking with Johnson. He exists only to win these sorts of seats. I said before the result, a winning margin of about, say, 5%, maybe 7% something, um, that wouldn't be a disaster for the Tories. I mean, any loss is bad. But between about 5 and maybe 8%, that's in line with Labour wins since the Conservatives came to power. You could turn that back again, potentially. If the margin was over 10%, well, then you're looking at the last time this happened being when Labour were winning general elections. A margin of 15% or more would be a big win for Labour. Absolutely disastrous result for the Tories. The winning margin was 18%. It wasn't a great turnout, 39% as opposed to 64%. Uh, but this is not a hotbed of Tory support that just stayed at home rather than vote for Johnson. This is a Labour city that voted specifically for Boris Johnson and his nonsense in 2019 against their normal behaviour. But their idol has fallen. And this is likely to be repeated across the Red Wall when those seats next come up for election. Which would be the next general election, you would imagine, unless it turns out that even more Tory MPs in the area are sexual deviants. So these results, huge blow to Johnson. Both of the results were not just bad in themselves, but worse than expectations in scale. Before the Wakefield result was announced, Tory MP Andrea Jenkins tried to say, she tried to downplay the loss by saying, ah oh, yeah, It'll be an absolute disaster for Labour if they don't get a big win here, as if a Labour win would be a disaster for Labour when it was their seat. Not actually true, but it doesn't matter. It was a big win. The last time Wakefield was won by a margin of 18% was in 2001. In that year, Labour won 412 seats, with the Conservatives winning just 166. And Labour MPs would be wise to mention this in passing over the next week or so, whenever they are in earshot of Tory MPs in Parliament. Because what happened then, is if it weren't bad enough only getting 166 seats, do you know what the Tories did then? They elected Ian Duncan Smith as their leader. But let's not get too excited. The results in both Devon and Wakefield could be partially protest votes. They're likely to be. There may well be Tory voters who stayed away because they didn't think it was winnable and wasn't as important as a general election. Labour's campaign, as, as ours did the Lib Dems campaign come to it, focused heavily on Boris Johnson's failures. Come the general election, Labour especially are going to need to be pushing their own credentials. They'll, they'll have a manifesto offer for the electorate then, which they don't have now, but they remain untested on how effectively they will put that across to the people. It won't be enough just to tear down the Conservatives, they have to build themselves up as well. For that, they are untested. For the Liberal Democrats, the three seats they've now taken from the Tories in the last year will not be among their target seats at the general election. They'll be going for easier targets, but they won't have the resources to chase after lots and lots of them. You know, there'll be a lot of talk that if swings like this are seen by Labour at the next election, that they would win a majority. But this is a nonsense. They're not going to get a swing like this at the general election. They were able to target Wakefield hard. And in the absence of Conservatives campaigning there, they got their 18% uh, majority. Um, but they, Labour sent in wave after wave after wave of Labour MPs and activists from all over the region, far and wide, come the general election, these people are going to be mostly campaigning in their own areas. No party can throw the kitchen sink at any one seat in a general election in a way that they can in a by-election. So there's work still to do, but it is very clear that the public are sick of Boris Johnson's Conservatives. By the time they finally do chuck him out the airlock, because they've got to, Tory MPs may well be tainted so badly by the fact they supported him for so long that the public are sick of the whole lot of them. But I take nothing for granted. It's not enough for the public to lose faith in the government. The opposition have to actually win the election. It's not enough to stand by and wait for the government to lose. They have to win it. But for now, very good result. Better than I'd hoped, which means that for Tory MPs waking up this morning, it will be worse than they expected. And that's how you're supposed to start off Happy Fridays. It even triggered a ministerial resignation. Party chair Oliver Dowden resigned citing the failure of the party to get to grips with the problems, um, citing solidarity with the grassroots of the party, saying it wasn't good enough. 
It wasn't the most stinging resignation letter, but it was a clear statement of dissatisfaction with the way things are being run. It very squarely put the blame on Boris Johnson reading between the lines. And it may not be the last resignation. There may be other developments as well. I'm recording this this morning. It's a few hours before it gets published. There may be things that have happened before this video is published. But if there's lots of tasty things happening, don't worry, I shall talk about it tomorrow. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm waiting to see now how MPs uh, react to Johnson, how the Johnson reacts, naively believing that he's ever capable of change. What's he going to do? Promise to change things up? How many times has Boris Johnson promised his Tory MPs that he's going to change? Oh, I'll do this. Thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, this doesn't work. Yeah, it will change. He never does, ever. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.